So today I'm going to talk about why I'm so bullish on small caps and growth stocks. I actually got asked this question the other day and I thought, you know what, that's actually a really good video. We'll actually talk about this and why going into 2022, I'm ultra bullish for small caps and growth stocks for this year and going forward in the future. So um, yeah, hope the video is useful. If you could hit the like button. So first of all, I think the key point to say is that, you know, obviously small caps, growth stocks have been absolutely killed in the last few months. You know, a lot of the indexes at the moment, the S&P 500, for example, the last kind of three months have been a bit ugly on that index. But if you look at a lot of the growth stocks, a lot of the small caps, I mean, some of them, you know, for example, if we look at DraftKings and there's plenty of other ones out there, if you look at them sort of stocks, the small caps, the growth stocks, them stocks have been absolutely tanking a huge amount. You know, a lot of them have lost 50, 60, 70% of the value. They are major drops. Those are the sort of drops that you only get really in a stock market crash. You know, with a lot of these small caps and growth stocks comes the higher risk, the higher volatility, and that they can go down a lot faster and that's the risk with them. Same time that people always forget to mention at the moment is that they do go up a lot quicker and they do normally when we're in a bullish market outperform a lot of the more um, mega cap stocks. So I'm gonna say that point there, which is something that some people have been forgetting recently, but as well as that, they do drop a lot quicker. Now, the thing is, is that these st stocks, when they do drop, normally drop around, you know, 20, 30, maybe 40%. That's what they normally drop, but at the moment we have major dips on them, you know, 60, 70%. And like I said, this is normally what you only get really in the stock market crash, which is very unique when you consider that, when you look at the indexes and everything that's out there, we aren't really in a crash at the moment. Now we have a dip on a lot of these stocks a lot of these stocks are getting viewed negatively and i do not look at that from a negative point of view when we actually have a st stocks or the stock prices fall so much for me that's actually a bullish sign because when stocks are at 52 week highs after 52 week highs that's actually when there's more risk you know a lot of the times the valuations get stretched and stretched and stretched and for so long you can't carry on doing that and you will have the snapback and they'll come back to where they should be valued whereas when you compare it to when stocks are actually crashing or dipping the bottom on on them stock prices is it might go it might be a bit ugly for a period of time, but the risk to them now is hardly any. You know, a lot of them are valued at so cheap valuations that the upside potential is now absolutely enormous. And sure, it might be a little bit ugly at the time. You might go down on some of them positions. There'll be generally a lot of fear out there in the media, people talking about them stocks in a negative light because they are dropping. But generally over a long period of time, there's actually more reward to risk in them opportunities. So I'm more happy to buy in them situations than buying at 52 highs on the stock. So for me, I don't mind buying into the, when these dips happen, I love buying into dips. And the thing is when you have these dips in the share price as well as creating more upside and the risk being a lot less, when you look at a business, when you look at a stock, you've got to remember all of that is short term problems. When you look at a stock, if you have a great business, if you have a great business that's growing revenue or growing revenue and profit, or even if it's an unprofitable company and it's just growing revenue and eventually it does start making its way to profitability and then gets the profitability which that's a whole different story that's a mega catalyst when you have that happen when you have a growth stock that's been unprofitable and they carry on growing revenue and eventually they hit, they hit that break-even point and they start making a lot of profit you'll see a lot of stocks that go on and a very good run when that happens but as long as you have a business that's basically moving everything all the metrics in the right right way that's a good business it's all doing the right things there and if over a long period of time a business that moves everything inside the company in the right direction is rewarded on the share price point of view so as long as you are buying great businesses and sure the share price might be falling on the floor but everything in that business keeps moving in the right direction eventually wall street over investors go we should be buying that dip and that's been proven you know the stock market has had many dips before you've had many great stocks that will have fallen down so much percent you know if you were to look at a history of say an amazon through its life cycle you know if you ever look at amazon i'm sure there's plenty of t i couldn't tell you off the top of my head but i'm sure there's plenty of times where it's had you know 10 plus dips on um the 10 30 percent dips on the share price i should i should have actually got these numbers actually before doing this video to use that as an example but you can probably look at this for yourself and um, you know it'll have you know 10 major 30 percent dips and what's happened well it's a great business so what have people done eventually they go you know what we should be buying that stock and they've come in and bought it so you know over a long period of time it's a proven model you know 100 percent all of the time every single dip in a great company has been a good buying opportunity and made money from it so for me i've just got to look at my businesses and go am i happy with the business is everything in the company going in the right direction and as long as it's that's happening 
I am ultra bullish on that company and I know in the long term it will do well. And I think another thing for me personally is that I've already been through a lot of these dips already. You know, for me, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a, an experienced investor right now, but I definitely got a, I've definitely got a bit of experience. You know, I've been in the stock market for uh, five years now. So I've had a lot of experience of buying into stocks and then them stocks not doing well after I bought them and going down on them positions. And when you have been through that and you've been through them stocks, you've been in the trenches with them stocks and you've seen so much negativity out there and them stocks are going down and down and down, you know, you're down 10%, 20%, 30% on the stock. And then you see the reward of that people actually a few months later, maybe even a couple of years later, realize, oh, you know what, we should have probably been buying that company. And then they go and recover and they recover very quickly if they're at cheap valuations. I've seen it happen plenty of times. So because I've been through that, I also have the confidence as well to carry on holding it because I have you know, been through that situation. If you're a little bit of a new investor and this is your first time kind of going through a major dip, you're looking at this going, flip it. I've, I, I, I think I might have messed up here. I think I made a mistake here because you've not really seen, you're not being through the situation where you've been down, you've seen the, you know, the negativity and then you've been out the other side of it. You know, it's a, the, the stock market, one of the big tests of the stock market isn't really if you're, you know, quite good at looking into businesses really. Obviously you need to have some sort of skill and be able to get the basics there. But a lot of the time, a lot of the stock market, long time, long term investing, the big thing is mindset half the time. Having the right mindset and then you'll do well. And I think even, I think Pete, it was Peter Lynch or Warren Buffett that said something about that, is that, you know, that's one of the big things that you, you need to have is a strong mindset and where your actual goals are and being able to kind of stomach, you know, some of these the turbulent times that you go through. And it's like something like, you know, for me, I, there's plenty of stocks that I could use here. One that I don't really use too much on the channel at the moment is Tesla. You know, I was here on the YouTube scene, you know, I've been making videos on YouTube for five years now. Um, and, you know, back in 2019, um, I made a video talking about Tesla uh, and I said that I'm buying Tesla in 2019. Uh, I started buying the stock. I can't remember exactly because it's it was pre-split um, since they did the stock split. But, you know, I started buying Tesla at like $250 and then Tesla went from 250 down, you know, 240 to, you know, 220. And at one point, you know, I was down on, tw I was down at 30% on Tesla share price and, you know, that obviously was a bit of a hit, you know, beat down 30% on, on Tesla was was a bit of a hit at the time. And when you, if you were through that time, if you not, not if you haven't gone through it, you might not know this, but at the time Tesla got so much negativity in 2019, the short sellers were absolutely huge on it. One of the most shorted stocks, I've never seen shorts attack it like how they attack with Tesla. You know, there was so much FUD out there, especially when the share price was dropping. You know, the factory is on fire. Oh, the, the Shanghai plant is going wrong. Elon Musk is going to get taken away from Tesla. There was so much negativity out there. But I had my plan as a long-term investor. I look, uh, as, as a Tesla shareholder, I had my long-term plan of, okay, Tesla, they will kind of, you know, they'll. this is the game plan. This is how they'll grow revenue. This is eventually how they'll get to profit. They'll come mass producing these cars. They'll have this factory that comes in. This factory in Shanghai will bring in all, all this, um, you know, sales into them. Eventually that'll expand to the Berlin Gigafactory and so on. And then you have the Model Y coming in and all these factors for a long-term business point of view, you know, started playing in. And you look at that company now, I mean, the share price has been absolutely amazing. I got a good, really good return from it as well. You know, fantastic company. And then you look you look at that, you know, a company like Tesla, I mean, that's down 30%. Now you look at some of these companies that are in the sell-off. Some of these sell-offs, the sell-off in some of these stock prices has been devastating. You know, you've had stocks that have lost, you know, 50, 60, 70% of the value. And, you know, I can agree that some of these stocks were getting a little bit overvalued uh, or were overvalued, but you've got to look at the sell-off now, you know, 60, 70%, a huge amount of sell-offs. And what's that done? It's now pushed a lot of valuations to the cheapest valuations they've ever been at. You know, a lot of the stocks out there, a lot of the small caps, a lot of the growth stocks are at the cheapest valuations ever. You know, some of them have been at the cheapest valuations they've ever been at for, you know, two year, three year, four year, five years. Some of them are at the cheapest valuations ever right now, which is saying a lot. And, you know, you look at some of them businesses and you'll see it all once again, everything inside the company moving in the right direction. And then the value at the cheapest valuation it's ever been at. And you've got to realize that eventually this isn't going to happen. Sometime, you know, the valuations, even if it gets to a midpoint of where it's normally valued at, there's going to be plenty of upside and then you start factoring the growth as well. And it's like, you know, when you look at the small cap index, you know, the, once again, you know, valued at the smallest, uh, the lowest, sorry, lowest valuation it's ever been at. And this doesn't happen forever. You don't have this forever. At some point that rotation will happen. And I, I think that will happen 
very soon with a lot of growth stocks, uh, a lot of small market cap stocks. And in fact, what you're seeing right now is, you know, it's not being really talked about, but a lot of these kind of small caps and growth stocks, a lot of them are being put in a bottom in at the moment, you know. Th at the moment, you know, you look at the likes of DraftKings, the likes of Corsair, a lot of these stocks at the moment, a lot of these growth, stock, growth stocks, small market cap stocks, even though there's so much negativity out there in the media, because they're sold off out so much, because we're starting to run out of sellers, we're actually getting down to a, a car holding in a lot of these stocks right now. A lot of these stocks haven't put, you know, new 52 week lows in for a while. You know, a lot of them are starting to bounce up, you know, 10, 20, 30% at the moment, which is a very positive sign. And that's what's happening. You know, eventually you can't, you know, a lot of these stocks can't keep going down. You can't have a stock that goes from 60, 50, 40, 30, you know, 20, 10, zero. It can't go, as long as it's a functioning business, it's not gonna go all the way down there. And eventually sooner, sooner rather than later, people are gonna look at this from a, a long-term point of view and go, you know what, that business is actually okay in the long term and look at what it's valued at. We should go buy this opportunity. And that's what's happening with a lot of the small caps. Eventually, a lot of people are starting to look at our growth stocks as well. Is a lot of people looking at these now going, look at the valuation, look at the long, long term game plan. We should maybe buy it, you know. And at the moment, a lot of these stocks at the moment are starting to get into car holders because of how much they sold off. You know, a lot of the, you know, paper hands have kind of moved away from from the stocks you know them the, the, the people that might have got in you know towards 52 week highs a lot of them are moving away from it and now you're getting the car holding which is once again a positive sign and as well what you got to factor in in 2022 is a lot of these growth stocks a lot of these small market cap stocks they're going to probably have another good year you know in 2022 what they're all going to do they're probably all going to re, re, you know report decent amounts of revenue growth they're probably all going to you know hopefully move a bit more into profitability you would hope and as long as these are if it if they are already profitable extend that profitability and you'd hope that you know with, with another year of really good financials 12 months down the line 12 months down the line you have another year of financials well if say the share price stays flat, well, what's gonna to happen to all these valuations? Once again, you go down even cheaper, valuations go even cheaper. And you look at that going, okay, in 12 months time, can we, if we have a good financial year, are we actually gonna have valuations from like historic lows go down even cheaper? Now, potentially it could happen, but the chances of that happening, if you have valuations just dropping, 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 and everything moving in the right direction, eventually investors, Wall Street will wake up and buy them opportunities. And that's what I'm at at the moment. You know, for me, I've, I've said this plenty of times, 2022 in my opinion will be a good year for growth stocks and small market cap stocks i've been on the record for a real long time saying this now i've always said big tech you know the s p 500 that's always been a little bit 50 50 to me just because it's been a lot higher valuations um now to be fair it is starting to have a bit more of a you know decent correction so i am getting a bit more bullish in that sort of space and that's why for the first time you've seen me actually buying a lot more big tech i'm you know starting to buy the likes of facebook the likes of paypal for example which i've not done for I mean, one and a half years. So that says a lot. But growth stock small caps, I've been buying heavy uh, through, you know, probably since the start of February, February 2021, when we started coming down, even heavier through, you know, August, October, November, December, January, February, been buying a lot of small market cap stocks because I, that's where I see a lot of opportunity. The valuations are cheap. The growth has been absolutely amazing. And now, like I said, there are so low valuations. It looks like there's a bit of a, you know, hard hold, hardcore holdings, or the holders in there that are holding that positions. And you add in another year of fantastic growth, the valuations that they're at. I can only see 2022 for me being, you know, a very good year for growth stocks, for small market cap stocks, because they're just so cheap and this, this they're doing so well. Now, obviously, you know, when you are making them short-term predictions, I mean, that's basically a prediction for the next nine months. There is always that risk of, okay, what happens if a recession happens? What happens if, you know, the, the Russia-Ukraine situation um, and, you know, Russia decide, okay, you know, let's say they invite, invade Ukraine and then they move on to Poland, for example. You know, there's all these little factors that could, you know, easily knock this uh, forecast or projection out the window because short-term, there's a lot of, you know, risk and, um, I don't normally do short term predictions because I, I made it on the video yesterday, you know, 12 months ago, we're, you know, right now we're down in the dumps, you know, 12 months ago, where are you? You're, you know, euphoria stage, February 2021. Before that, 12 months before that, where are you? You're in a, a coronavirus cr crash and you're thinking, there's no way in 12 months we're going to be at 52 week highs with this pandemic happening. And that's how quickly things can change in a 12 month period. You know, 12 months time, you know, let's say March 2023, which is a little bit scary to say, but you know, March 2023, 
where we'll be, we'll be at, you know? So many things can change, but at the moment what I'm seeing, this is what I'm seeing. You know, this can't, for me, carry on happening forever. And with what I've seen before, with the experiences that I had, with the valuations that we're at, with the growth that these businesses are gonna happen, these stocks cannot just carry on going down or staying at these sort of prices. Eventually, they have to move in the right direction. So um, yeah, that's me just kind of talking about why I'm bullish on growth stocks as well as small market cap stocks, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, hit the like button. Um, put a few comments down below what you want to see some videos of. Um, I'm up for ideas that are in there. Um, as long as I've not already done it on the Patreon, sometimes I get a few comments about doing a certain video, talk about a certain stock, or you know, talk about a stock with earnings. Uh, sometimes I've, I've already covered that on the Patreon, so there's no point in me kind of uh, covering it again on the YouTube channel. So yeah, um, let me know down there anyway, and uh, I'll catch you in a bit.